Hi there. In today's video, I will show you how you can run the Llama 2 language model without a GPU. Now, you're still going to need quite a powerful machine to run this, so I will use an EC2 instance to do this, because my computer is 12 years old. So let's start a new instance. I will call this instance CPU Llama 2. And we are going to select Ubuntu as the operating system. And we're just going to use the default 2204 LTS AMI. And for the instance type, I'm going to select R54XLarge, which has 128 gigs of memory and 16 vCPUs. And it costs around $1.21 an hour. So a lot cheaper than the ones with a GPU. And I'll just pick a key pair from here. And I will select an existing security group that just has the port 5000 open because I'm going to use this with my chat WTF chat GPT clone project. And I am going to add 32 gigs of storage for this. Now, if you want to actually download the model weights on this EBS, then you need a lot more. But I have downloaded them already on a different volume, so I only need 32 gigs. And I will select GP3 and I will encrypt this volume. And that should be it. Let's launch this instance. And I will then open this instance in VS Code. So I will copy the DNS name and I will go to VS Code and I will connect to this host. And here we are. We are in the server now. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sudo apt update and sudo apt install python3 pip and while this is working let's attach our volume with the llama2 model weights to this ec2 instance so i'm going to click attach and i am going to select my cpu llama2 and i'll attach this volume and now if we go back here and i should have pressed yes first and then i'm going to do lsblk to see that here is my volume that contains the llama2 models so first i will do sudo make directory slash mount slash llama and i will do sudo mount dev slash nvm one n one mount llama and then i can open that in vs code so i will go to mount llama now in fact i have llama installed here already and a bunch of other stuff. So I will create another directory called CPU Llama. And I'll in fact open that folder in VS Code. So now we have an empty project here. So let's clone the Llama repository in here. So I'll go to the repository and copy this URL and I will do git clone that. And then let's cd into Llama. And we have our download.sh script here, but I will not use that in this video because I have already downloaded them. So what I will do is I will just move from dot dot slash dot dot slash llama to slash tokenizer dot model here. And I will move llama to 7b chat in here. So now we should have them in here. So now we should be able to run llama if we first install it. So I have to do pip install e dot. And to test this out, I am going to also install my Llama2 Flask API repository. So I will copy this link and I am going to git clone this one inside the Llama repository. And then I am going to go to Llama2 Flask API. And here we have the api.py, which we should be able to run. But of course, this is not going to work because we don't have, well, we don't have Flask for one. So let's do a pip install Flask. And then let's try to run this. But we don't have a GPU, so this fails. So how do we fix this? Well, we have to do a couple of modifications to the Flask API and the Lava 2 repository. Now, if you take a look at the pull requests in the Lava 2 repository, and you search for CPU, then there are in fact a couple of pull requests that enable CPU. But none of these have really worked for me perfectly. So I am going to do this from scratch. It is very easy to do. 
So first of all, in my Flask API, I have to change where I use NCCL to use DLOO. And I have to do the same thing in the Llama2 generation.py. NCCL, I am going to change it to GLOO. And another thing we have to do is we have to find where we use CUDA. And we are going to comment out this line. And we are going to comment out this line. And also here, we will replace CUDA with CPU. And that should be it for this file. Then in the model.py, we also have some references to CUDA. So we will just remove these. And these modifications might already work. Let me see, are we using NCCL? No. But there's one more thing I noticed that I have to do. You might not have to do this and you should try it first without this modification. But this torch inference mode will cause problems. So I will remove it and I will do it everywhere. Now, I read that this will greatly slow down the process. And of course, when you use a CPU instead of a GPU, it will already slow down the process a lot. So try it without it. If it works, then great. But if it doesn't, then remove it. And that should be all. Now we should be able to run this. So if I now run api.py again, then we are actually initializing Llama. Now I have 128 gigs of RAM in this machine. But if you have less, if you have like 32 gigs or something, then you should add like, like a 40 gig swap file or something <laughs> to actually use it. Because this will use a lot of memory. Now, the 7D model usually takes around 100 seconds to start up. And I actually think that it is mostly about the disk usage. Because if we go to htop and we check out here what it's doing, then we in fact are just using a little bit of CPU. So it's not really doing anything, but it takes a very long time to do this. So I think that it's reading from the file system. In fact, here, the first one is it's using 11% of the CPU. But now, as you can see, we have an application running on port 5000. So it has started. So it took 104 seconds. So now what we can do, since VS Code is forwarding this port, then I can go to my chat WTF project and I can say hello. And if we wait for around 20 seconds, or I don't remember if it was 20 seconds or 5 seconds, in this particular instance, then we are going to get an answer. And here we have the answer. Hello, it is nice to meet you. Is there something I can help you with? So now we have Llama running on CPU on an EC2 instance. And if you have enough memory and processing power on your own machine, then you should be able to just run it there as well. Now, I might as well try it on my local machine because I haven't actually tried it yet. So my machine is 12 years old, so maybe it won't work, but let's see. I might as well fork the Llama repository and create my own CPU Llama repository. So let's do that. Let's call this CPU Llama. CPU inference code for Llama 2. And I'll create this fork and I am going to pull this repository. So let's do it here. Let's go back. And let's git clone this one. And I will do the changes there and push it up to my repo and then download it on my machine. Okay, I have now created a GitHub repository and I am going to clone it now. Git clone this one. And I am going to cd into CPU Lava and I will git clone my flask repository as well so llama2 flask api dot git and i will go to llama2 flask api and i will edit the api to also use glo and in fact i will update this as well so i will do args dot backend and then i can add it to the arguments so i will add here backend and default will be in CCL. Although I think I might be able to just use GLO here because this is just for the API, I guess. But I will still keep it <laughs> default in CCL. And I am going to say that this is the backend. MCCL 
for GPU, GLOO for CPU. So now I should be able to run that. And then I will need to download the model weights. So I'll just copy them from my EC2 instance. So I'll do SCP and I will get the DNS name of my instance again. And I am going to copy from mount slash llama slash CPU llama slash llama slash llama 27 b chat here. Is that correct? No, this is not correct. Echo uh, PWD. How do you do this? PWD. Oh, you just said it's PWD. MNT Lama. Okay, this is it. So I will copy only that slash Lama 27B chat. Sorry, I have to say SCPR. Okay, now it is downloading it. Now I am currently inside an external USB drive because I don't have enough space on my SSD so this will probably make it even slower but let's see if it will work and apparently it will take 20 minutes so I will see you in 20 minutes and I will also have to copy over the tokenizer so I will do this but I will get the tokenizer dot model and then I am going to install all the dependencies so let's do pip install e dot and i am going to also do pip install flask and in fact i have to go to cpu llama first and maybe i should do python 3m then then make a virtual environment so i don't actually have to install everything globally and i am going to source then bin activate and then i can do all that stuff all right i have now successfully downloaded the 7b version of llama and i have installed all the dependencies but i think that i am going to have to reboot my system first because i am almost running out of memory and swap so i will do that first and then let's see if a 12 year old machine can still run Llama 2. All right, I have now rebooted my system after 117 days. So let's see if I can in fact run this thing. So now I have some memory still left, but I am screen recording at the same time. So my CPU usage is a bit high, but let me see if I now run api.py with the backend GLOO flag. And hopefully something will happen. We are actually starting it up. So on the server, this took a hundred seconds. So maybe on my machine, it will take an hour. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. And the CPU usage does not go that high in this step. And in fact, my screen recorder is using most of the CPU usage and Python is just using 2.9%, 2%. So again, I think it's like reading something from the file system and since this is in a external USB drive, then it is probably going to be a lot slower. But let's see how this goes. And let's check our resource usage. Okay, we are filling up the memory and we are doing a little bit of swap already. Now with the GPU, it will use around 16 gigs of memory. But with my testing using the CPU, it uses a lot more. But let's see. Okay, now the swap is starting to fill up. We don't have any more memory left, so we are using only swap. Hopefully 25 gigs of swap is enough. And now we are up to a gig of swap already. And now my screen has frozen, so I'm not quite sure what is happening right now. Perhaps we are using too much memory now, and my screen recorder might have stopped working as well. And I can't even move my mouse, so... This does not look that good. Okay, we are back now. And we freed up some memory. Maybe that is not a good thing. <laughs> and we in fact crashed the terminal. So perhaps it is not going to work with only 16 gigs of RAM. So I think you will need like 32 gigs of RAM and then some swap extra to run it. Let me know in the comments if you were able to run this on your machine and what are the specs of your machine. So right now I'm going to have to continue using 
AWS to run Llama until I buy a new computer. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, leave me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you in the next one. All right, I actually got it to run now after I closed Chrome and stopped my screen recorder. And it took 2000 seconds to run this. And actually I ran it once already and it took 3000 seconds. But I had some application running at port 5000 already, which is the default port for this. So it didn't actually work, so I had to do this all over again. So now it's running at port 5050. Now I'm kind of afraid to open the browser because this uses so much memory, but actually now it dropped down. It was using all of my memory and like 40, almost 40 gigs of RAM, but now it's went down. So I guess I could run the browser. So let's see what happens if I open the browser. And then I need to go to my localhost 5454, no 5544. And I have my chat application running here. But now this is using the port 5000, so I have to change that. So let me go here and let me do nano chatgpt.php and I will change here port to 5050. And let's also do create title.php and I am going to go to port 5050. And let's then run this again. And let's see if it works. So if I go here and I say hello, then we should be getting a response maybe in <laughs> a few minutes.